Hey guys, welcome back to Polish Professionals, the blog and brand to help you conquer the workaday world with style and poise. It is me, Mel, and it has been a while since I've been with you guys. Um, we are in a crazy pandemic. Um, I pray everybody is safe, but I hope you guys have been well, and thank you so much for tuning back in with me. I was excited about this tag video, and so without further ado, I will get going on the top five deal breakers for me when buying a luxury bag. But before we get too far into this video, I did want to say hit the subscribe button and the bell if you have not joined us yet. And if you're returning, thank you so much for coming back to us. We are here for all the bosses out there to conquer the workday world. We want you to spend your money wisely. We want you to get that next promotion. We are here for all the bosses out there and we hope you enjoy our content and subscribe to our channel below. And now deal breaker number one when buying a luxury bag or really any bag for that matter. But in particular, when you're spending a lot of money on your bags, you want to make sure that you are really using those bags. So you can see here, I've got a little bitty Chanel here. Um, but deal breaker number one is size of both the bag and the strap length. So this is a very small bag, as you can tell. Um, this tells you how vain I am. I did love this bag. Uh, but it was a little too big for my iPhone, my plus size iPhone. So I ended up going down a size and getting the pro that was smaller just so it would fit in this bag, which is ridiculous. That means a bag's not really working for your lifestyle, but it is cute, right? Um, and so my deal though is bags have got to be useful. This one's actually wide, so you can get a little bit in there now that I can do that, which is which makes it helpful. But if you're gonna spend money on a luxury bag, make sure you're really gonna use it. And a super small bag that doesn't really hold anything probably is not the best way to spend your money. Um, additionally, straps matter to me. Um, I just need it to be a length where I can run it as a crossbody. So for me, that is critical, um, that it fits all the way down to my hip, that it isn't some awkward length that'll hit, cut me in the wrong places because that is just not comfortable or useful either. So for me, strap length really, really does matter. And on some, I have shown, I, I will link it here, actually other videos where I have shown you guys how I actually add straps to different bags, even if it didn't come with a strap. So I'll link that here. Um, I have some great hacks on that, but this did have a perfect length strap. And so for me, this was a great buy, but this will candidly be the smallest bag that I will ever buy. I will never buy one smaller than that because otherwise it's just not worth the bang for the buck. Deal breaker number two for me is a clutch. I have decided that I have enough clutches in my collection and really a clutch is just hard to maneuver with. You always have to have it on you. So I'm not buying any more clutches in my collection. I will be fine to buy something that's convertible, meaning it'll have a strap that you can take on or you can take off um, or that one you can stick inside the bag itself. But clutches themselves to me are just not that practical. And I love having bags that I really can use in multiple ways. And so for me, clutches are now out of the question. I've got a few staples if I really, really need that really small clutch, but for um, value per use to me, a clutch is just not worth it. So that is my second deal breaker. Deal breaker number three for me is the open top. So if it is something that doesn't just close well with a zip or if it doesn't have a good snap that comes down, that really for me is just a killer. I can tump my bag over, things like that. I have a few Neverfulls that are big that I really use when I'm traveling, so they have their place if you don't like a top to your bag. But for me, those are limited uses um, in those bags, and so any bag that I'm adding now is not gonna be that big, duffel kind of Neverfull from Louis Vuitton, that kind of look. I'm done, I've got two of those in various, um, dimensions and sizes that work for me when I travel and do other things like that. But otherwise I need a closure. I need something that locks, that snaps, that zips, and it does it easily. I don't want to have to be fiddling with that. Um, to me, I'm hard on my bags. Uh, I, I beat them up when I travel and do other things. So for me, it's got to have a closure that works easily. That is number three for me on my deal breakers. All right, guys, the number four deal breaker for me is really the material. So I have had a ton of bags over the years. I have sold a ton of bags over the years because as I mentioned, I'm hard on them. And there are a few materials that really just don't work for me in my lifestyle. If you um, can keep a cleaner lifestyle, maybe you're easier on your bags than I do, these may work for you. But for me, I'm not spending the money on them anymore. I'll give you an example of a few. Um, I had two patent leather bags that I've had over the years. One was a YSL and one was a Chanel. I loved them. In fact, it was my first Chanel that I ever bought. It was a light yellow patent leather. 
I wore it, um, I loved it, but it transferred color. And when I stored it, I happened to store my patent leather by some other bags, didn't put it in a dust bag, my fault, but it transferred color from another bag. So not even like rough housing it, it transferred it onto the yellow. And so basically ruined my Chanel bag. Um, I mean, just because it was such a dark color that I happened to put it by. So that's my fault, but be really careful when you pick your fabrics, especially in these luxury bags, um, because it really does matter on the longevity and the look and wear of the bag over time. So a couple of them I'll tell you that I like just uh, by way of background, some ideas. You know, I love a skin. This is a snake skin. This is Nancy Gonzalez. Um, and to me, it's a beautiful bag, but snake skin really does tend to hold up well. So something like this, uh, I can use a lot over time. And as you can see, it has a long strap, short strap, all the straps for me. So um, this is a great bag that I really have liked. And I actually got this recently at a sample sale um, and I am happy to tell you about the new sample sales too. Side note. Anyway, but think about the material that you're buying. This is a, this second bag here that I have that talks about material is a little softer. So this is a Chanel. It's a recent Chanel bag. It's in pretty good shape, but this is a lambskin. So I will just kind of close in on this. This is not as hardy as um, their pebbled uh, leathers that they have, their caviar leather. So this was kind of iffy for me, but the color, y'all, I mean, the color. I didn't see this bag I wanted in a caviar leather. So um, that's why I ended up with this one. It is better though, for example, than a patent leather. This one you can clean a little bit better. Patent leather is just super hard to clean. So this just may give you an idea if you're thinking about a bag, be cognizant of the material material you're buying so that you guys can make it work for your lifestyle. So that is my deal breaker and number four, no patent leather and really know your material. Last but not least, this is deal breaker number five for me. It is the price point. So what do I mean by that? Well, um, you know, luxury bags are expensive. I realize that they're not just for utilitarian purposes. Uh, for me, I view it as an investment. I view it as something that I'm going to keep in my collection for a while. And so I really am grateful for that opportunity to be able to have those bags. But if I'm going to invest the money, I want to make sure it is worth it and it's not excessive. So, um, for example, I think a caviar leather Chanel bag will last you forever. They can take the wear and tear. The price per use is going to go way down because you will not have to buy another bag. Um, you can almost fix anything that goes wrong. I've really never had anything that goes wrong with a caviar, caviar leather Chanel bag. You will have that for a lifetime. It's classic. And so your price per use is really, really low over time. So you're not buying these trendy bags here and there and spending $100, $150 all the time. You've got this one bag and you use it forever. So, you know, price point does matter, um, but I don't want it to be excessive. Um, and what I mean by that is like Hermes. I, it's a beautiful bag, um, but to me that's a car. And so I just can't, I can't quite get there. Um, but you know, something that is much south of an Hermes bag, which is not hard to do, um, you know, that to me is good. The other thing is trying to buy um, a value, meaning buy it on the pre-love market, things like I said, like a caviar leather bag, you really can buy that on the pre-love market in great condition and continue to use it. So you pay half the price to begin with, plus it helps recycle those um, bags so they get good homes and get good uses um, and you get a great value. So for me, that is a real value to make sure I'm thinking about the price point, my price per use, am I really going to get the value that I want to get out of my money? And so price to me is deal breaker number five. We hope you enjoyed this tag video of our top five deal breakers for our luxury bags. If you have some other ideas, let us know. We would love to hear about them in the comments below. Also, we are tagging some of our favorite bosses that we cannot wait to see their videos on this too. Thanks again, guys, for joining us. And if you haven't hit that subscribe button and the bell, we hope you do so you never miss an episode. Take care.